wonderful to see you. Hey, and it's Hallie. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, praise the Lord. We have a good group here tonight. Good group, good group. Well, the title of the message is uh, Peace in the Storm. And I believe that the Lord has shared some things with me. Uh, and I'm going to pass them on to you tonight that um, might help when there is turbulence or disturbance, what I call disturbance in the force, uh, in the atmosphere uh, around you. Uh, it may not be in you, uh, but it could be around you. And we know that there are things that are happening with the government. Uh, for instance, um, I believe it was uh, Sunday morning as I did my live video. I had my glove with me and I like to have my glove with me sometimes because I want to pray over certain countries. And those that are watching the video that are intercessors can can participate in that. And so I, I prayed over uh, China. I prayed over um what was that? Uh, Afga Afghanistan. Afghanistan. And I prayed over North Korea. And then when I turned on the uh, the television, um, um, I guess it was yesterday, it was about uh, North Korea had just uh, launched another missile uh, that went about 800 miles and, and could have hit uh, Japan. And, and so... I do believe that God is giving us instructions. He is telling us what is what we are to pray, what we are to speak out of our mouth. And, and if you are a prayer warrior, um, I, would, I would encourage you to get a world map, uh, something that you can lay out before you, whether it's a globe. Do you have one, Joy? Mm -hmm. Do you, do you have a, a world map? I um, use a children's map book. My children use, so we have very detailed information about each country. Okay, uh, that, that, that is excellent uh, because you can lay hands on the Middle East. You can lay hands on uh, any any country um, um, in, in Africa. Uh, you can lay hands on the United States. And let me tell you something. It's going to be through your prayers and the prayers of other believers that will help get us through uh, these last days uh, because there's going to be uh, tribulation. It says that there's going to be tribulation. Jesus said this, uh, you know, when he, when he said, um, in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. You know, there was um, someone said um, this to me a couple of days ago. Uh, they said we need to make Jesus bigger than any problem that's out there, whether it's human trafficking, whether it's COVID, uh, whether it's the variants, uh, any sickness or disease. Uh, that we need to make uh, our economy. Our economy and George knows about our economy, uh, and there's some, you know, some things that are out there, George, uh, that you probably need to be uh, praying about since you're right there in the middle of of uh, making decisions and and doing uh, doing that work. Uh, but this this woman said we need to make Jesus bigger than any of those other problems. You know, and that's what that scripture really means. Jesus said, but be of good cheer, be joyful. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Philippians in a little bit. And it says, you know, rejoice, uh, be cheerful uh, because I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world, you know, peace in the storm. And I know that, that you want peace, I want peace. I want to live in peace. And just a few moments ago, because I've asked him for a fresh word. When I say a fresh word, I'm talking about um, fresh manna uh, from the scriptures uh, that we can partake of tonight, that we can eat 
uh, his word, that we can taste of him and see that he is good. Hallelujah. And so just a few moments ago, the Lord said this to me by the spirit. And I wrote it down and, I, and I'm going to read it to you right now because it, it, it gave me a different perspective on peace. What, what the spirit said to me was God's peace puts you in a protective bubble. God's peace puts you in a protective bubble. That means that it, it does not matter what's going on around you, in your workplace, in your family, uh, in your marriage, uh, in the economy, uh, in our government. Uh, it does not matter what's going on around us. God's peace puts us in a protective bubble and and that just uh, my heart began to leap on the inside of me and I said oh thank you Jesus because I looked up that word peace in the Greek in the New Testament the Greek uh, word that is for peace when Jesus stood up in the boat and I'm going to go there in a few moments is Irene 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 it's I hyphen Ray, R-A-Y hyphen N-A-Y, Irene. And Jesus stood up in the boat and he says, Irene. And there was peace. Hallelujah. What did he do? He put his disciples in a protective bubble. Hallelujah. There was a storm going on. The boat was filling up with water. The waves were coming. It was flooding. Hallelujah. There was a storm. You know, tonight, God wants us to walk in peace. He wants us to be in that protective bubble. And I thank the Lord for that. That he loves us so much that he wants to protect us. And that word, Irene, means a place of safety, a place of prosperity, and a place of tranquility. Hallelujah. That, you know, it doesn't matter when the winds are beating at the door and the windows and, and the, you see the trees outside that are, that are going ever which way. And, uh, and I know North Carolina has had some, some hurricanes, but you can be at peace in that protective place, protective bubble that God has for you. And so we're going to learn a little bit more about how to get there, about how, how the Lord wants us to get there. You know, and in John 14, I'm going to start there. Uh, John 14, uh, 26 and 27, before Jesus left the earth, he wanted to make provision for us. And in John 14, 26, he says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, Jesus said, I'm going to provide another comforter. I've been your comforter. I have been your protection. I have been uh, your teacher. I have been your guide. But I'm gonna, I'm, I've am gonna. i got to go. And when I go back to the Father, I'm going to send another comforter to you. And that was the Holy Spirit. And he is the God on this earth right now. It is the dispensation of the Spirit. And, and we're in the, the season of the Holy Spirit, in other words. But then he left something else in verse 27. He says, peace, I leave with you. My peace. And this is the same word, Irene. I'm going to leave it with you. I'm going to leave you a protective bubble. Hallelujah. That you can step into 
and that you can surround yourself with my peace and the enemy cannot come and steal from you. He cannot come and, and try to kill you or, or bring havoc in your family or upon you. I'm going to provide for you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. Give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. There are two things that block peace. That keep you from going inside the bubble. One is fear. And the other one is pride. One is fear and one is pride. Thinking that we can do this on our own. Thinking that we can get by today without the Lord. And, and I know all of us uh, that are on this uh, session tonight, we, we love the Lord. We trust the Lord. Uh, we want the Lord. And, and so, but there are times when when that pride will rise up and it will block your going into the, the peace bubble. Irene, I want to go into that peace uh, in, in, in my life. And um, so he left us some things. And then I want, to, um, want us to turn over to... Um, uh, in Matthew 14, Matthew, okay, Jesus tells his disciples, this is the story of the, of the, the, the disciples going across um, the, the lake, Jesus constrains them and tells them to get into the boat, and, but they had just come out of a wonderful miracle service that should have built up their faith. They had just come from the fishes and the loaves where Jesus performed miracles. He, he blessed the fish and the loaves and he fed, what was it, over 5,000 people? Jesus fed 5,000 people. This was a miracle and his disciples saw it, hallelujah. They saw the miracle, you know, and I, Sophia, I'm so glad to see your face because your husband is a miracle. Your husband is a walking miracle. Hallelujah. And I want to give the Lord all the praise uh, for your husband and for, for what he did uh, for your husband. Hallelujah. And so his disciples, Jesus' disciples had just come out of that, that big service and saw what Jesus did with the fish and the loaves. And then Jesus said, now I want you to get in the boat and I want you to go to the other side. And while you're going on to the other side, I'm going to go up and pray. In verse 23 of Matthew 14. And when he had sent his, the multitude away, he went into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the, of the waves. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> For the wind was contrary. You see, you have these winds that you have the Holy Spirit, but you also have other winds that are um, sometimes contrary to what God is wanting. And, and you've got turbulence in the atmosphere. And that's what's going on in the world today. There will never be peace in the world. And I know that we're supposed to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I know. And I, and I do that. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That's the body of Christ, as well as the physical Jerusalem. That is also the church the body of Christ. That's what it represents, that we're to be praying for the body of Christ, that we will be stable, that we will stay in the, in the bubble of peace. Hallelujah. Because of the turbulence that's out there in the world today. Remember, 
We're not going to make those problems bigger than our Jesus. COVID is not greater than Jesus. Diabetes is not, not greater than Jesus. Cancer is not greater than Jesus. Um, uh, kidneys that, that do not function uh, are not greater than Jesus. Jesus is the great one. Amen? Can we agree on that? That Jesus is the great and mighty God. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. And you know, when you get that perspective in your mind, oh, Jesus is greater than this. Jesus is greater than this, this argument. Uh, Jesus is greater than my checkbook. Uh, Jesus is greater than uh, the, the situation in my workplace. Jesus is greater. And when you get that thinking, then nothing can stop you. And then that's when you begin to walk in peace. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to walk in peace. I want to walk in peace in the midst of the storm. When there is water filling up the boat. And that's where they were. And it says, and the, and the ship was being tossed to and fro. You know, we're not to be tossed to and fro. That's what it says in Ephesians chapter four, that we're not to be children tossed to and fro, but we're to be steadfast in the word of God. And it says in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the water. Hallelujah. And when the disciples saw him walking in the sea, they were troubled saying, oh, it's an evil spirit. It's a ghost. They cried out in fear. Number one, what blocks people from walking in peace and getting into the peace bubble, and that is they get afraid. Oh, well, I'm not going to make my bills this month. Oh, I'm not going to get over this sickness. Oh, I'm going to catch this. Oh, I'm going to catch that. You know, fear has torment to it. And it will block faith. It will block faith. And so we need to let that faith arise in us. We need to let faith. There's three things that need to remain in us in order for us to walk in peace. Are you ready for these? These are not new to you. Faith, hope, and love. Those three remain. Heaven and earth will pass away, will go away. Some things in your life may go away. But praise the Lord, faith, hope, and love will never leave us. They will always be there. They will be steadfast in our lives. And you know what? That brings us into the bubble. When we operate in faith, when we hope, because it's an anchor to our soul, our thinking, hallelujah. When we operate in faith and we operate in hope and we operate in God's love that never fails, woo, we find ourselves in the bubble, in the little bubble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, being in the bubble reminds me of what the doctors told us about our daughter when she was so sick and we had three big hospitals tell us that she was going to die unless we put her in a sterilized bubble. They said you need to take her to Houston, Texas to Anderson Hospital where they can put her in a sterilized bubble. Literally, that's what they said. And then she will live. But praise God for his miracle that he gave her, that she didn't have to go into that sterilized bubble. But now I want to go into the, into the peace bubble. I want to stay in there. Hallelujah. Because Jesus left it for me. He says, peace, I leave you. I'm going to leave you the peace bubble. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. All right, let's read on. 
And when his, and they, they thought and they were fearful, but straightway Jesus spake unto them and said, be of good cheer. You know, Jesus always says that. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And that's when Peter said, Woo! If it be you, let me come and walk to you. Hallelujah. You know, at least he got out of the boat. At least he was going to trust Jesus to, to, to be able to walk to Jesus. And I believe that's where all of us are in the body of Christ right now, that we need to be walking and not crawling. We need to be walking and running to Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus said, come on. And when Peter was come out of the boat, he began to walk on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind, see, when he looked elsewhere, when he began to look at the winds and he began to look at the waves and he began to look at the turbulence in his life, that's when he began to sink. Faith, hope, and love will bring you into the bubble. And that's where Jesus wants you. He, that's where he wants you tonight. And I know that there may be some turbulence in your life. You know, I don't know everything, but I do. I do see some things. And so what I'm saying to you that in the world, if you stay in the world, tribulation will come upon you. But Jesus said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And then Jesus reached out his hand and he, and he caught Peter by the hand and he brought him up out of the water and he saved him. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his arm hand and caught him and said, oh, ye of what? Little faith. If you had stayed in faith, Peter, you would have stayed in the peace bubble. Wherefore did thou doubt? And then when they came into the ship, the winds ceased. Hallelujah. Now, I told you that I was going to talk a little bit about rejoicing. And so if you could turn, if you have your Bibles right there, turn with me to Philippians. Chapter four. It starts out the first of the chapter in verse four about rejoicing. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Jesus says, be of good cheer. Didn't he say that? He said, in the world, you will have tribulation. If you get over here in the world and you get all wrapped up in the news and you get all wrapped up in what's going on in your family, and if you get all wrapped up in what's going on in your body, if you get all wrapped up in, in, in your finances, then there's going to be some tribulation there. But the Lord said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. But if we stay rejoicing, if we stay in that area of the Holy Spirit, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Praise God. The Lord is at hand. That sounds like exactly what happened uh, with Peter on the boat. Jesus reached out his hand to Peter and he's reaching out his hand to Jen and, and Sophia and Holly and Lee and Lucy and Sharon and George and Joy. And he's, he's reaching out his hand. Hallelujah. And he says, I will save you. He says, be careful for nothing. So don't take any care. Don't be anxious for anything. Don't be doubtful. Don't be fearful. And it says, 
but in everything by prayer and supplication. What? With thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And then what? From verse six to verse seven, you step into the bubble. From six to seven, verses six to verse seven, you will step into the peace bubble. It says here, and the peace of God. I reign a. Can you hear Jesus saying that to you right now? A reign a. He's saying peace. Peace be in your mind. Peace be in your body. Peace be in your throat. Peace be in your stomach area. Peace be in your back area. Peace be in your joints. Peace. Hallelujah. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding. We can't understand it because the, the carnal mind is an enemy to God. But when your mind is renewed to the word of God, then that puts you in position to receive God's best. Hallelujah. It passes all understanding. Shall keep. What does that what does that say to you? Shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Does that sound like a bubble? <laughs> does that sound like a bubble to like you? Sounds like a bubble to me. It's going to keep you. It's going to bring you into a place of safety, of prosperity. Hallelujah. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, this is what we're going to think on. We're not going to think on uh, what's going on in, in, in uh, the government and what's going on in Georgia, what's going on in North Carolina, what's going on down in Florida, what's going on in Texas. Oh, what's going on? We're going to think about heaven. What's going on in heaven? You know, I'll, I'll tell you what's going on in heaven. Rejoicing is going on in heaven. They're praising God. They're not worried about anything. They're not anxious about anything. All of, they're, they're just trusting in the Lord. They see Jesus sitting up there on the throne and they're just saying, oh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, I trust you. Hallelujah. We need to trust him with our families. We need to trust him uh, with our finances. We need to trust him with our bodies. We need to trust him with our minds in the name of Jesus. I come against depression right now. Depression cannot stay in my presence in Jesus name. It has to go. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Amen. You know, in Romans, and if you're taking notes, I'm going to give you three scriptures in Romans. This is about if we if if a person stays out there in the world, this is what they're going to get. In Romans 2 9, it says that. That evil is going to come. That evil is going to come. And then in, in chapter 5, verse 3, it says that, that tribulation worketh patience. And so I, I, I don't know about you, but I don't pray for patience uh, because uh, tribulation uh, might come. A turbulence might come. But there is, there is long suffering is one of the fruit of the spirit. And if you're producing the fruit, then you're producing patience. And then in chapter eight, verse 35, I love this. I'm going to, I'm going to turn over there and read it. I like to put my eyes upon the word and it's, uh, it's good to do that in Romans eight. 35, just in case you might think that you're far away and that nothing can get to you and nothing can be done about your situation. I want you to listen to this, what the word of God says. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Mm-mm. 
our, our distress, our persecution, our famine, our nakedness, our peril, our the sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, or no, in verse 37, no, in all of these things we are what? More than conquerors. You're more than a conqueror. Why? Because Jesus has left you another comforter, the Holy Spirit, and he's, what else? He has left you peace. He has left you peace. He says, I, I, I've left you peace. I've left you a protective bubble to jump into so that the things of the world will, will not make a difference to you. Hallelujah, what's going on in the world will not make a difference. Why? Because you are not of this world. You're from a kingdom far, far away. Hallelujah. You're from the kingdom of God. And that's where we're to live. And that's where to, we're to, we live and move and have our being in what? In Christ Jesus. And so that's where we're supposed to be moving. That's what we're supposed to be hanging on to. Faith pushes us forward into peace. Hope keeps us anchored, keeps us steadfast so that our mind doesn't run away with us. Hope is an anchor to our soul, our emotions our feelings, our attitude, our will. And then love. God is love. And when we love, we're walking in him. We're in him. Hallelujah. You know, there's a little book that Brother Fred and I read a long, long time ago. And it, it was, had a very simple uh, title to it, In Him. In him, we live and move and have our being. In him, you will have everything that you need. In him, you will have victory. In him, you will have prosperity. In him, uh, you will have stability. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I speak to emotions that one day you're on a high, and the next day, you're in a deep pit. And in the name of Jesus, I speak stability to your emotions. And I speak you into that peace bubble in the name of Jesus. Array nay. Array nay. I speak that over you in the name of Jesus. That you will have peace in the storm. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for that. Yes. We thank you for helping us to move in you today. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus.